Good afternoon, everybody. Nido ma Florence Highway in Sibi Gasun. Pai gusto ka nido siya. Iguti ka gupigyan, isko kigamtat, kigamtat at isupod yan. Good afternoon, everybody. I, uh, my name is Florence Highway, and I'm from Pelican Arrows, which is part of the uh, Peter Ballantyne Cree Nation of Northern Saskatchewan. I grew up on the land with my parents in their trap line, in their fishing camps. And grannies were always, either one of them was always around. She never said very much, but when we were with her, she'd do things like make tea or go pick mint or make the fish or whatever it was that was caught that day. And she didn't instruct us. She always, always said, you know, you got eyes, you got ears, and you got a mouth. And remember, what's here is what's given today for our, our use. You never overfish. You never kill anything for nothing. You have to use it. You gotta respect it. So as children growing up, we'd watch her do all this stuff. And then a day or two later, she would say, come here. And then we'd sit around her and then she'd give us a knife and she'd she would say, okay, what did I show you a couple of days ago? So we would do that. We, we learned from our mistakes. You know, it took us a while and it, it, it was always something, whether it was a duck or the fish. It took us a while, but we eventually did learn. And uh, that was the thing about Granny. She was so respectful of everything. The land, the water, the birds. And I gotta share a little funny story with you. When two, my brother and my cousin, they went along the shore and they killed these little black birds and, and they were so proud of themselves and they used the slingshot. And they were so proud of themselves, they come and put them in front of Granny and she was sitting around the fire and she just kind of looked at the birds and looked at them. They must have been about maybe six or seven. And she looked at the birds. She looked at the, the boys, the little boys who were so proud. And finally she said, what are you going to do with these birds? And she said, oh, we're not sure. I don't know. Both of them had said that. So Granny looked at them and says, you, Gordon, you go get the water. You, Richard, you go get the wood. So they kind of looked at each other, kind of puzzled. And so away they went, and Granny started to pluck those little birds. And they were quite tiny when she was done. And she put the frying pan on the fire, and she said, come and sit here, come and sit with me. And she cut them in half and kind of uh, sectioned them and I said, okay, sit around. We didn't ask questions. She just kept doing this. And now she said, when she was done, she said, now bring your plates. So they took their plates and gave them to granny. And they're still not saying anything. They're just looking at each other. And Granny said, now you eat them. So my brother, of course, being the clown he was, picked up the little drumstick. It was very tiny. So he started chewing on it. And I kept glancing at Granny and at Gordon. We ate. And Granny said, now put the bones on to the fire and she said to them, she said, I hope you learned something. I hope you learned something by doing this. 
It's not very kind to animals. Even little animals have feelings. It's not kind to kill anything that you're not going to put to use. And they sort of thought of this and thought of it. And, and uh, a few years ago, going coming five now, five years ago, I lost my brother. And I always relate that story. You know, he relates it to me. He says, he says, starts laughing. He said, yeah, I learned. I learned that all the birds, the fish, everybody has feelings. They're alive. They're on the land like we are. And it's very unkind to kill anything for nothing. If you're not going to use it, don't, don't uh, kill it. So that was a lesson learned, and you never forgot that. I don't know about Gordon, because I, I left Pelican when I was nine to go to the residential school. So I missed a lot of that part in my life. But I did grow up speaking Cree, because everybody spoke Cree. My friends, my family, my grandmother especially, she always said to me, be proud of who you are. You're a young First Nations woman. And you should always be proud and never forget that when you grew up, the first thing you learned was how to speak Cree. That was instilled in you. And even though they took that part away when I was growing up at the Red School, I never forgot that. And I never forgot, I never forgot Granny's teachings to be proud because I didn't like myself very much growing up because of what I was told and, but Granny's words kept coming back and be proud of who you are and never, never forget that your language is you. You have that spirit to, to speak that language and be proud of it. Be proud of who you are because you have a beautiful spirit. She's the only one that my parents are. You're so beautiful, but to look at somebody, it's not beautiful. Beautiful is what's inside that spirit, to be proud of who you are. So those were the lessons learned, and I never got, forgot them. And working with people that are very vulnerable in the city, I always try and teach them to love themselves back, to love themselves for who they are, no matter who they are. So it's kind of difficult sometimes when you talk to them. They don't like themselves and the sorrow and the heartache and everything else that was taken away is all the abuse, the physical, the mental, the sexual, everything else. They put that away and they keep drowning it so they don't have to deal with it. So it's sometimes it's hard, but I have my heart on it because I am a social worker, but retired and I enjoy what I'm doing, and I hope that I help them along the way, that they are who they are, whether they're men, women, children, that they should be proud of where they came from and honor the grandparents, the ancestors that have gone, and to carry that with them. And one day I hope that they become healthy and walk proudly on the road that we, we all have. So with that, I want to thank everybody, and I hope that uh, I have reached someone. Respect the land, respect the water, respect everything that's around you, because that's that gives us life.